Let's review our weak entities. A weak entity can be defined uniquely only by considering the primary key of another owner entity. The owner entity set and the weak entity set must participate in a one-to-many relationship set. That is, there's a key constraint on dependence to policies. And the weak entity set must have total participation. So it's a bold edge that's an arrow here in that identifying relationship set. So we have a bold edge between dependence and policies. And of course, to notate the weak entity set, we put bold edges around the dependence and policies as well. And the partial key of P name is a dotted line. Translating weak entity sets is fairly similar to what we did before, but we have to be a bit careful. The primary key of the weak entity set can't just be a key because weak entities don't have keys. It's the concatenation of the weak entity's partial key with the key of the, the entity set on the other side of the identifying relationship. Okay, so here it's the P name and the SSN of the employee to whom this weak entity belongs. All right, and that concatenation gives you the pair P name and SSN. You'll note here that we say on delete cascade, where previously we said on delete no action. What on delete cascade means is if you delete the thing being referred to, then you must delete the things that refer to it as well. So in this case, what that means is if you should remove an employee from your employees table, you must remove its dependence from the dependence table as well, which is a little bit sad. If we just said on delete no action, what that would have meant was if an employee has dependents, you're not allowed to remove them from the employees table. So these are semantics you can decide, of course, to capture the actual way that the rules work in your organization.